do you want a commander deck that will not only have big plays, but will also regularly win you games? Well, with just one simple formula and a few other ratios, your deck will go from mana screw to perfect brew in no time. Hey everybody, Leonidas here with a beginner's guide to commander, and welcome to chapter 3 of your commander textbook, Deck Building. I'm sure you've had those nights where you just can't seem to draw more than 3 lands all game, or your first 6 pulls are all basics, and if you're still new and haven't experienced that yet, well, buckle in because that's a mathematically unavoidable fact about magic and randomization in general. But the percentage of times it happens can be drastically reduced. How? With simple probability and math. Also, a little thing called hypergeometric distribution. Now, before you click away, it's actually super simple to understand and has been simplified down for us to effectively just plugging in numbers into a calculator. And remember to stay tuned till the end of the video. That's where my most important information is because it all builds off of everything else you'll learn. First, let's go over the template. This is your effective bread and butter for making a new commander deck. All this template won't work for every single deck out there. For example, my oops, all lands brew, this will work for most generic decks and strategies. Just going down the line, how many of each card type should you run? Single target removal, 8 to 12. Board wipes, 4 to 5. Card draw or filter, 10-ish. Mana ramp, 8 to 12. Lands, X. This is a tricky one that will vary from deck to deck and from commander to commander, so we'll go over it at the end. Starting off with single target removal, I have it set at 8 to 12. Why? Simply, you will almost always need a removal spell. Mid game, mid game, possibly late game. You have three opponents and they're all going to be in the lead at some point. With the average being 10 removal spells, you would be expected to see one every 9.9 .9 cards, but since you can't have 9 tenths of a card, it's effectively once every 10 cards. Now, you might be thinking to yourself that by the time you've drawn 10 cards, it'll be way too late, but don't forget that you start the game by drawing 7 and the 8th one at the start of turn 1, meaning that by turn 3, without any additional draw, scry, or filter of any kind, you would be expected to have drawn into removal. Simply draw 10 more cards, and you would be expected to have drawn into another removal. And while 10 turns can be a wilder wait, the need for removal in those turns is cushioned by your board wipes, your card draw and filter, the other players might have removal, the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all, and maybe you'll just be the one in the lead during that time. So why the range of 8 to 12 if the math works out the best for 10, if most or all of your removal is universal, like utter end, you can get away with having fewer since it will apply to almost any and all situations. However, if most of your removal is picky on when it blows up, like smelt, having a few more increases your chance of having the correct removal for any given situation. And lastly, your counter spells would be counted as single target removal for the sake of this template. And if you're interested in learning more about how to use counter spells, click the link in the top right of your screen or in the description below to take you over to my video on how to use counter spells. The second category is board wipes at four to five. At five, you'd be expected to see one in every about 20 cards with the the 7 subtracted for just starting the game, you would need to draw, on average, 13 cards to see one board wipe. The reason this is okay is due to the fact that while you may still need one late game, they are usually more expensive than single target removal, and less effective since they usually sweep your creatures up with them too. 4 is really just used if your deck can get away with it. Asymmetric board wipes, like Cyclonic Rift, mean you will need fewer because you can get more value out of them. High amounts of card draw or powerful card draw, like Rishkar's Expertise, can give you more wiggle room, or simply from playing a creature flood strategy that makes board wipes a bigger shot in the foot than anything else. Our third category on the list is card draw and filter. This covers scry, surveil, explore, brainstorms, and pretty much anything else that can take specific cards off the top of your library. So no, not shuffling. The magic number I found is 10. Again, with 10, you'd be expected to draw one every 10 cards, meaning that by turn 3, you'll be expected to have drawn one, letting you draw even more cards, propelling you towards your other removal spells and board wipes. I say 10-ish, because 9 is an acceptable number to be running in a more creature-based value strategy, but that's as low as I would reasonably go. Going over 10 is a lot more acceptable, depending on the strategy, you could run as high as 15 to 20 plus. For example, my Yannette Cryptic Sovereign deck runs around 33 different effects that allow me to affect the top cards of my library, since the strategy is to cast big, odd cost of stuff for free off the top of my library with her attack. However, I would not count cards that cycle or manifest, or mana rocks that have a card draw ability, since those aren't guaranteed, bringing my deck down to a nice, much more conservative 28. The fourth group is Mana Ramp at 
8 to 12. What counts as mana ramp is the best place to start? Mana ramp is anything that gives you mana, such as mana rocks and or mana dorks, or puts lands onto the battlefield at a faster rate than just your standard one land a turn. However, there is a mana cost restriction to this category too. To work mathematically, the spell has to cost less than or equal to half of what you determine your X value to be in the land step, rounding up. For example, if you determine X to be 5, such as it is in my Yannet deck, a spell classifies as a mana ramp so long as it costs 3 mana or less. So as I'm sure you know by now, with the average of 10 ramp spells, you're expected to draw one by turn 3 after 10 cards have been drawn. The lower end is for if your X is 3 or less, or if your ramp spells are powerful enough to accelerate you several mana. The higher end is for if you focus on a landfall strategy and want to drop multiple lands very often, or if you just need exorbitant amounts of mana in the late game. There's not much more I can say on mana ramp that isn't reliant on the information from the next category. Lands. This is probably the most important information in this entire video. To make this process as simple as possible, I'm going to break it down into just five easy steps. Step one, determine the mysterious X value for your deck. X is the amount of mana you need in order to access the primary strategy your deck wants to do for your deck to come online effectively. This will always be a whole number. Round up if you get a 0.5. In most cases, this value is simply your commander's mana cost. As the example again, my Annette deck's X value is set at 5 because she costs 5 and the deck is built around her ability. A few notable exceptions to worry about though. If your commander is mainly just there as a value engine, consider the mana curve of your deck and decide what value has the most important cards. Also, the value of X should almost never drop below 4, and certainly not 1 or 2, unless you're going for a very particular strategy, such as Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. If you think your number is 2, it's probably 4, because you want to double drop or triple drop cheap stuff so you don't get outsized too quickly. Step 2. Click on the top link in the description to go over to a hypergeometric distribution calculator, which is super simple to use. Set the population size to 99 to represent the total number of cards in your deck, unless you have partners then put 98. Set the number of successes in the population field to 33, plus the number of ramp spells you have. With the average of 10, our number would be 43. 33 is a good baseline to start at being one-third of the total population. This field will represent the number of lands and mana in your deck. Set the sample size field to 7 plus your X value. This represents the number of cards drawn. The reason we put 7 plus our X value is because we want to hit X mana on field by turn X to be online. Set the number of successes in sample field to your X value. This represents the number of mana cards that will be drawn by the turn decided. Step 3. Click Calculate and observe the results. The only field you really need to care about is the bottom one, which shows your chances of drawing X or more mana. Following along with my Yannette deck, X being 5, I get 0.66 as an answer, meaning only 66% of the time I'm hitting my mana, or nearly one-third of my games I'm getting mana screwed. That's where step 4 comes in. Step 4. Slowly increase the value in the second field, number of successes in population until you get a value between 0 0.80 and 0 0.85 or 80 to 85 percent. The more ramp you have that produces more than one mana, like Soul Ring, the lower your number can be. For example, 49 gave me a value of 0 0.81. The reason you don't want a value higher than 0 0.85 is because once you cross that threshold, your likelihood of mana flood increases drastically. Step 5. Simply just subtract the number of ramp spells you have from the final number you input into the second field and you have your magic number for the amount of lands you should run, making the total number of lands for the example 39. If we go back through the list with 39 as our value for X, we'll get these values. Single target removal 10, board wipes 5, card draw 10, mana ramp 10, lands 39. This adds up to just 74, leaving 25 cards for the actual meat of your deck. However, that can be fixed. Using cards that do two of the items on the list, such as explore, which ramps and draws, can shorten that 74 even further. If we go back to the odds of drawing something out of 10 cards, here's what it looks like. One removal spell, one draw spell, one ramp spell, four lands, half a board wipe, and two and a half cards of meat. However, if you run a lot of card draw or filter, more than 20, and your strategy is not to dead drop into many lands late game, there is a solution. Consider counting each ramp spell or land that produces multiple mana as however much mana it adds, meaning that Soul Ring and the Bounce Lands would count as two. Thran Dynamo would count as 
three, and the signets would only count as one. Bonus lesson, value. To make your deck even more competitive, run at least one alternate win card based on your strategy. A few good options are Simic Ascendancy, Approach of the Second Sun, The War of the Spark Jace, or Laboratory Maniac, Revel in Riches, Felidar Sovereign, or Door to Nothingness. Also, consider running at least one card that allows for graveyard recursion, such as Elixir of Immortality or Spring Bloom Druid. If you enjoyed the video or found it at all helpful or useful, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment of who you're going to build a deck around now. Subscribe if you aren't already for weekly guides and card suggestions, and ring that bell to be notified of whenever I upload a video or go live. Need cards for the meat of your new deck? Check out the playlist here for commander cards you should be running but aren't, or here for the complete playlist on your commander textbook. Consider following me on Twitter with the link below for daily updates and political satire. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.